Ooby doo it's everybody's favorite boomer and uh, vintage lens enthusiast. Well, I also got a bunch of old cameras. I bought this from B and H back in uh, 2006. When this camera came out, this is the Rebel XT. It went for $8.99. You got to understand, this is a 8 megapixel DSLR without video. And, uh, well, it was reduced. It reduced it quickly. It came at $8.99. It went to $6.99. That's when I bought it. Then it went to $5.99. And then it was discontinued some, some years later. But this was the best-selling uh, DSLR of its era. Now, I'm doing this video in uh, January 15th, 2022. And you're talking about a 17-year-old camera. So, if that ain't vintage, I don't know what is. So, uh, it comes in black and silver. I got the black model. And the black was like spray painted on. And I could see it's starting to peel off now in, in places or something. It just looks really weird. Oh, yeah, like here. You could see how this, this flat black is uh, wore off. So, uh, I guess you're better off the silver. It has a very small screen. I'm going to turn it on. Here's a picture. Let's find a, uh, oh, pardon me. I took some pictures of, uh, frost. Let's go this way. Oh, there we go. So it has a very small screen and it has some, uh, LCD up here with some information. Uh, it goes from ISO 100 to ISO 1600. 1600 is really not very usable, but 800 is very usable. You can leave the camera on 800 all the time and only turn it down when it's, a, you know, you're on the beach or a snowy field or something like that. Um, does it have some, uh, what's the downsides? It only likes Canon lenses and select uh, uh, third party lenses. Uh, Tokina, it'll work with, I know that. But a lot of lenses it won't work with, like Tamron, it has trouble with Sigma. But then Sigma is a problem in and of itself. Everyone knows what I think about Sigma. So I went out and I bought this uh, Canon EFS 18 to 135 Nano. Where does it say Nano somewhere? Oh, a Nano. See? And it's got image stabilizer. And it's a nice lens, except it's a little weak. Why is it a little weak? Because... It goes from f3.5 to 5.6. It's an 18 millimeter, 135 millimeter. A 5.6 is pretty sucky. I mean, it means that's a bright light lens, really. So, and 3.5 really isn't that powerful either. But, you know, if you're shooting at 800 all the time, it doesn't matter. Plus, it has built in uh, image stabilization. Uh, and the autofocus works beautiful with this camera. Plus, I could stick it at any other APS-C uh, um, Canon DSLR and it'll work just fine. So this thing has great color. Uh, it has uh, excellent excellent resolution uh, based on the 8 megapixel uh, sensor. Uh, I took thousands of pictures with it and uh, you know it laid fallow for a long time because as soon as the XCI came out which is 10 megapixel I went and I got that and I started using that more and then I got the uh, the T1i, uh, the T3i and I got the SL and um, well, I, I just started using it more ever since I got this Nano because, uh, you know, it's, uh, uh, you know, it didn't like third party lenses. What could I say? So you can see it's in excellent condition. I'm going to put a manual because in the manual, you can make the, the, uh, the flash pop up. So I'll put it, I like aperture priority myself. So what happens is, uh, you pick the aperture and then the, the camera, uh, picks the shutter speed for you. Plus there's an AV adjustment. So of course you, you press uh, down halfway with this uh, while the, uh, the the data is lit up inside the viewfinder. You press the AV button and then you turn this and you, you can adjust it. So if I want to go from uh, F8 to F11 and then uh, the camera uh, automatically adjusts the shutter speed for me, which is great. Plus it's got full manual mode. It's got uh, Shutter priority, which they call TV. 
It's got this A depth thing, which I never use. Uh, and some other fancy molds like uh, that I never use either. It doesn't have any like cool molds like modern cameras have. Uh, and the menu is very, very basic. Very, very, very basic. You know, it's uh, you could adjust uh, some parameters. I put the sharpness all the way up. I like to have one click down in the contrast, and I didn't leave everything else at uh, nominal. That's just the way I shoot. Oh, I often use the uh, uh, white balance. Usually, uh, if it's a tricky situation, I'll use it on automatic. But if I want to uh, retain, uh, say, like the blue hour or the uh, golden hour, then I'll stick it on um, sunlight. And conversely, if I want to enhance something, uh, I could stick it on uh, cloudy or shade or tungsten. And uh, it does a good job on that, too. So it was a very expensive camera when it came out. Very expensive. $899. Uh, it, it, that was a lot of money 17 years ago. And even when I got it for $699, it's still a lot of money. And, and right before it was discontinued, it was $599. Now I've seen these anywhere from fifty bucks to two hundred bucks, depending. I guess you know you could go uh, uh, if you want uh, excellent like new condition. It's going to cost you two hundred bucks. Uh, if it comes with the eighteen to fifty five, that's part of the two hundred. The body only, maybe you could get for a hundred. Uh, the eighteen to fifty five was a pretty crap lens. Uh, the old one, I got the old one, didn't have any built-in image stabilization. It was a week two. It was a 3.5 to 5.6. Now, this is uh, 18 millimeters to 135 millimeters. And uh, it's got a lot of glass in there. There's a lot of glass elements. So not only do you have a, a relatively dim image because uh, of the, uh, the F ratio, but every piece of glass absorbs a little bit of light. And that contribute, contributes to the overall dimness. It's a nice lens. It takes good pictures. Uh, and in fact, you're going to see some. I went to a bottler. Some people say butler, but I say bottler. I guess bots live there. And what it is, it used to be a working class mill town. And then um, there's still uh, like a residential area around the uh, where the mills used to be. And uh, it seems like a lot of uh, Spanish people move there in the downtown area. And, uh, well, it just has a real cosmopolitan vibe to it. All, all the, uh, the storefronts seem old. I mean, really old, like 100 years old, old or older. I don't know. And it has a, a big mill there, the American Rubber Company. And of course, they went out of business, and then they, they chopped up the mill into little uh, um, office suites. And you'll see some of these pictures that I took. And, of course, I went there today. It was January 15, 2022. It was like 15 degrees out, and I went there with a battery that was in the camera for a couple of months. And uh, it was one of these Watson uh, secondary batteries. And um, what happens is uh, you put it in, it's fully charged, but then right away it goes to half charge, and it stays at half charge, like for hours. So it stayed at half charge. <laughs> and it's a good thing, too, because I put two extra batteries, and then I found out when I came home that two extra batteries were dead, and they had to be charged up. <laughs> So uh, that's amazing. So I was out in the, it only, it, it screwed up two pictures. It overexposed two pictures. I don't know if that's because of the cold or something I did, but all the other pictures look properly exposed and properly focused. Uh, when you go out for a photo shoot, it's always a good idea to clean your lenses. Uh, I use like a, a Windex knockoff. And um, what I do is I take a tissue uh, for first, you dust off your elements. You take the, the lens off the camera, you dust off your elements with the, the, the can of compressed gas, and then uh, you take your moistened uh, tissue paper and you wipe it and dry it, and you do the same thing for the real element. And never spray the, uh, your cleaner on the lens, always put it on the tissue, and you don't need a lot, just enough to you know wipe away the dirt. And of course, you don't scrub it like uh, you're doing dishes in the sink that have oatmeal or baked beans stuck on them or something. And then when you're done with that, you dust them off again. Uh, I had to clean the sensor on this uh, because uh, the, it doesn't seem to be focusing exactly right. So uh, you see my video, how you clean your sensor, and I did that, and it seems to focus a little bit better now. And it's a good trick to always clean your lenses. That's easy to do. And uh, at least once a year or more, uh, depending how careful you are, you should clean your sensor. Because the sensor picks up in environmental and industrial fallout, uh, grime in the air, and it deposits on the sensor. 
Uh, so it's a is it lightweight? Hmm. Well, compared to those old metal bricks, sure it's lightweight. But according to um, a lot of modern cameras, especially the um, the mirrorless, no, this is heavy. It's heavy. And luckily, I had a heavy coat on because it was so cold, and I had the strap uh, around my neck, but it was going around the hood, so I didn't really notice it that much. But it is definitely heavier than the modern cameras, especially the the uh, the mirrorless type. Uh, just compact enough. You know, it's not too small. And one of the interesting things about this camera, I like Canon because they have a separate door for your uh, memory card. This is a compact flash. That's how old this is. I like compact flash because I got big American fingers and this is about as small as something I want to carry or, or deal with, you know, manipulate. Now, sure, uh, SD cards, yeah, I'm used to them, but they're so tiny. And sometimes when you push them in and they spring out, if you don't grab them right, you know, they fly off and they land on the floor and you got to scoop them up. <laughs> and uh, so I, I actually like compact flash. You know, it's uh, and they didn't really make the cameras any smaller when they went to SD. I mean, why didn't they shrink the cameras? Uh, uh, SD card is only half this width, then how come they, they couldn't have made the camera uh, that much shorter? It doesn't seem that way to me. So, and here I'll show you the battery, it's in its own compartment. Oh, this is a real Canon battery. This battery has to be. Uh, you know, close to, uh, maybe I bought a second one soon after I had the camera. So let's say it's 12 or 15 years, 12 years old. Of course, some of the newer Watsons, uh, some of them I got, they're brand new, maybe only a year old. And some are maybe 10 years old. And um, I got some of my ex-girlfriend. She had a, a, the XT and she sold hers, but she gave me the batteries, which is nice of her. Or I gave her 20 bucks for like four batteries or something. So I still got uh, like a bargain. And if you have more than one battery, I always number them. And this way, if I have them in a gadget bag or in your pocket or something, uh, you know, I'll use number one and I went to number two and then number three. And when you go home and recharge them, you know, which order to recharge them and stuff. So uh, this, this is the thing. If I want to sell this camera, even if it's in excellent condition, I can only get 50 bucks for it. So even though the, the guys still turn around and try and get 100 150 or 200 dollars for it, and then it's like a waste. If there's someone I knew who was like my best friend or uh, you know a, a, a lover or something, uh, I'm man, so I'm talking about a woman, of course. Uh, I guess the, I don't judge me on that, but that's just the way I roll. I would give it to him, but I don't know anyone to give it to, so I just keep it. And yeah, you know, every camera has a different look. The modern cameras with their uh, uh, more uh, uh, pixels, densely packed pixels, they have a different look than these older cameras. And of course, this it has a Canon look, but it has a Canon look of 17 years ago as opposed to the newer Canons. So, uh, you know, I just take it out and I shoot. If you're a photographer, you like to shoot. And the more options you have, you know, if you could take a good picture with 8 megapixels, then you should be able to take a great picture with more megapixels. And an 8 megapixel, what do you do? If you're going to post them on a website, you're probably going to, uh, you know, resize them to 3 megapixels, right? So, uh, so what does that matter? And 8 megapixels, you could put a 16 by 20 full frame pretty much with 8 megapixels and it'll look great. So, you know, um, if you could get one, someone's going to give you one, that's great. Take it. They're great cameras. Uh, make sure you get uh, two batteries and a charger. That's all I got to say. Uh, you can still get aftermarket batteries for you, so that's no problem. Um, does it come with a lens? It'll probably come to 18 to 55, which is uh, a mediocre lens at the best. They made a great camera and they put a mediocre lens on it. Um, the Nano, the Nano, I think they're still making the Nano. So you could go out and buy one for 500 bucks if you want to, but I got this one used, <laughs> of course. And um, I can't say enough that it's a really, really nice camera. And it's... Uh, take a lot of great pictures and it's very versatile within its range. Its shutter speed goes to 30 seconds to one two thousandth of a second, I'm pretty sure. And like I said, the ice hole goes from uh, 100 to 1600 and 100 to 800, they're virtually identical. And 1600 is, well, it's, it looks blotchy and grainy to me. I'm sorry. It's there, but you know, uh, I guess they just put it there. But 800 is totally usable all the time. So, 
if you could pick one up, like you said, cheap, like for 50 bucks or 100 bucks, uh, or someone's going to give it to you, and then you could shoot your heart out with it, and if anything happens to it, you don't care. But, you know, I kept mine, and it is vintage now. It's 17 freaking years old, and the only wear it has is the spray-on plastic, uh, the, this matte black that they sprayed on is wearing off. Otherwise, it looks like they're brand new. See, here it is here. You can see it's uh, uh, this flat black they sprayed on. It's just wearing off. But that's for me handling it with my thumbs. It doesn't have any abrasions or anything like that. So basically, if I try to sell it, people say, hey, look at that. It's, it's, it's a paint is peeling off. Hey, I don't want it. Good. Uh, you ain't getting it. That's all I'm saying. But and then you can just check out the pictures and uh, make your own decisions. Of course, I had some uh, pictures on this uh, compact flash card, and I'm including them along with my photo shoot in Butler. And this is the uh, 18 to 135 Canon Nano, which is... Uh, of 3.5 to uh, 5.6 it's good for sunsets now I cropped these to 16 by 9 to fit on your screen uh, if you have a, a laptop and you're in full screen it's, it'll fill the screen I added um, the EXIF data if you see a picture you like you can always pause it and then you can read the information there this is Butler. Butler is some old uh, mill town from the 1800s. The American Hard Rubber Company was there and it had a couple of mills. So it was like a company town. And uh, of course, uh, I don't know what happened to the, to the American Hard Rubber Company, but uh, they're not there anymore. And then, uh, well, people, uh, they commuted to uh, uh, newer industrial areas and maybe neighboring counties or neighboring towns. And these mills were fallow for a long time. So finally they broke them up into little suites. And then little uh, entrepreneurs moved in and they do their thing there. And this is one of the... There used to be mills every uh, big city. Patterson, uh, Booten. Uh, they all had their mills. Uh, most of them got knocked down. And they, apparently they, they have a historic sign from the, the late 1800s. So you're talking a uh, hundred years, I don't know, when this building was built. But it's interesting, it's an old brick building. Oh, I put some of these pictures on the 500PX, and they have the automatic tag generator, <laughs> and they called it a Nazi concentration camp. <laughs> this one right here. Oh yeah, it looks like a Nazi concentration camp. Well, just think people had to work in this mill, and maybe it was like a concentration camp. Now, surrounding this area is all residential. They have like a, a little business district where there's stores and everything. And so uh, there's a, a lot of white people around. But then uh, the main street uh, where the stores are, there's a lot of Spanish. Because America, you know, diversity is our strength. So uh, this is the thing they put along the shore for like uh, tide break, uh, breakers. They just uh, dump a whole bunch in there and they interlock and they make jetties out of them. Well, they put one here, so it's a, a out of place artifact. And here's the American Hard Rubber Company, 1898. Wow! But it doesn't say when it went out of business or anything. Uh, I had to go to the uh, eye doctor uh, this day, so I killed two birds with one stone. I took the camera with me and a couple extra batteries. And after I went to the eye doctor, this town was only like only five miles away. Now it's January. It's super cold out. It's like 15 degrees. And I have my eyes dilate. They put some drops in your eye. They open up your pupils so he could like spy in your eye and see what's happening. And luckily I have my clip-ons for my glasses. And that helped a lot. But man, you know, it was bright. So I think the camera has some sort of sympathetic vibrations with me. Because on a couple of shots it overexposed. And that could be because it was so cold. And maybe the mechanism had stiction or something. I don't know if it would be the shutter or maybe the diaphragm wasn't shutting down all the way, or maybe the battery was weak and it was sending weird information to the camera, I don't know. But luckily, uh, uh, you know, I doctored a lot of these up, uh, because especially this picture was somewhat overexposed, like the sky, but I, I, I dialed it in. Canon seemed not to mind overexposure too much. So if you're gonna uh, do any compensating, you, you could go plus one with no problem, and then, uh, post-process it. 
So there's a lot of quaint shops there, uh, but there's no uh, big stores. If you want to go to like a, a big box store, you got to go on the highway, which is a couple miles away, and then they have all those stores there. So these are like little mom and pop stores at bodegas, uh, mini groceries, stuff like that. So I'll, uh, I just walked up and down the street twice or three times and just snapped all these pictures so you could see how does the XT perform. And it performs really well. I want to document uh, that on January 15th, 2022, the Wawa was selling regular gas for $325. But if you go down the street like a mile, there's a Delta State gas station was selling um, <laughs> for $319. So that's a significant savings if you're going to fill up. I live by uh, Greenwood Lake, and they drain the lake in the winter to control weeds. And I just walked out on the lake and took some pictures. And I have a Tokina macro lens, a 35 mm macro lens. And uh, I like, uh, I have drafty old house, so at least I get to take pictures of frost.